Hello children. Uh, in the last lecture, uh, we have uh, done a lot of studies in, in the topic uh, management of natural resources. And today I am going to talk about something about the fossil fuels that is also a subtopic of the management of natural resources because fossil fuels are one of the natural resources found on earth. So today we are going to cover this topic fossil fuels. Now fossil fuels are obtained from the remains of plants and animals uh, which got buried beneath the earth millions of years ago and then it changed into coal, petroleum and natural gas due to excessive heat and high pressure inside the earth. So children whenever any plant or animal die, uh, its remains are present in the earth and they are subjected to high pressure and heat inside the earth crust and uh, it takes millions of years and then they are transformed into coal, petroleum and natural gas. All these are considered as a fossil fuels. So main fossil fuels are coal, petroleum etc. We are going to take them one by one. Now there are two uh, sources of energy. They may be non-renewable or renewable. So first we are going to cover what non-renewable sources of energy. These non-renewable sources of energy are following. Uh, first uh, let me tell you what are the non-renewable sources of energy. These are the energy sources or the sources from which we get energy and these cannot be replaced easily when they get exhausted once and are also called as conventional sources of energy. Means they cannot be replaced easily once exhausted. So these are called as non-renewable energy sources. Now we are going to take them one by one. The first and foremost important non-renewable energy source is coal. Now what is coal? It contains carbon and its compound. It is basically made of carbon and its compounds. Uh, basically main content is carbon but uh, some minor amount of nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur and hydrogen are also present. It is also, it also consists of some inorganic matter and coal is, a trans, uh, coal is one of the important fossil fuels. Now second important fossil fuel is petroleum. Now petro means rocks and oleum means oil. That is petro means rocks and oleum means oil. The oil which is formed in the rocks that is called as petroleum. So what is petroleum now? It is a complex mixture of mixture of solid, liquid and gases, gaseous hydrocarbons we can say and with small or trace amounts of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen and sulfur. Large reservoirs of petroleum have been preserved by nature for millions of years between porous rocks beneath the earth. Now these are the two main important non-renewable energy sources. Now we are going to jump to the topic formation of the non-renewable energy sources. How they are formed? So their formation will be discussed now. Formation of non-renewable energy sources. How these are formed? First let me discuss as we have discussed there are two non-renewable energy sources. So first is coal. How it is formed is actually it is formed from organic matter. Organic matter which get buried under the earth for 3000 million years ago due to high pressure and temperature when it is subjected to very high pressure and temperature inside the earth inside the earth this organic matter is converted into coal so this will get converted into coal which is a non-renewable source of energy now second we are going to discuss about the petroleum the formation of petroleum how it is formed it is formed by the decay of 
very small marine animals and plants buried uh, under the earth about buried in the earth for about 400 million years due to uh, excess heat and pressure it is changed into an uh, oil that is called as a fossil fuel or petroleum so when this is buried in this uh, in the earth for about 400 million years and it is subjected to extreme heat and pressure it gets converted into the oil that is called as fossil fuel and that oil is called as a petroleum now the next topic we are going to take is conservation of coal and petroleum. How we can conserve them? Since they are non-renewable energy sources and they cannot be replaced again and again in a short period of time once they get exhausted. So we should conserve them. We should protect them. So how we can conserve them? So the next topic we are going to take is conservation. Conservation of coal and petroleum. Uh, conservation means if I uh, define conservation means def uh, it means more efficient use with regard to economic, social and environmental cost and benefits which result in the attainment of higher efficiency, minimization of wastage and protection of the environment. Now we can how we can conserve them? We can conserve coal and petroleum by their judicious use. Judicious use means wise use. We should use them wisely. They should be used wisely and not wasted. And substituting them by other resources wherever feasible. Second is we can substitute them. Substitute them with other resources. Now conservation of coal and petroleum is a joint responsibility of the industries citizens, government, where each one has significant role in the management of natural resources. Now, next we are going to take is necessity of judicious use of coal and petroleum. Now, why this is necessary? The fossil fuels, coal and petroleum, they get exhausted as I told you and their combustion pollutes our environment. So, why it is required? That is why conservation is required. Conservation. Why this conservation is required? Since they are non-renewable energy sources they get exhausted quickly exhausted quickly second uh, they pollute our environment uh, their combustion to release energy pollutes the environment when combustion takes place uh, why combustion pollutes the environment uh, is the reason for this is when combustion takes place oxides of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen and sulfur are formed. Carbon monoxide is formed instead of carbon dioxide if there is insufficient air and as you know children carbon monoxide is a poisonous gas. The oxides of sulfur, nitrogen and carbon monoxide are poisonous at high concentrations. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas which leads to global warming. So the gases which are released on the combustion of the uh, coal and petroleum, they are very poisonous and they affect the environment, they affect the uh, life and they affect the human beings. Now uses of fossil fuels, uses of fossil fuels. In thermal power plants and steam engines, they are used very much, that is steam engines and thermal power plants are using them. Second important use is there are uh, many petroleum products which are formed and they are of many uses like petroleum products like petrol, diesel are used in motor vehicles and ships. Other uh, products like kerosene, LPG that is liquefied petroleum gas, they are used in the cooking purposes and petrol and diesel they are used as a fuel in the vehicles. The natural gas is a good alternate to fossil fuels like coal and petroleum. 
and the use of alternative source of non conventional energy such as solar energy and wind energy uh, should be promoted to save the rivers uh, reserves of the fossil fuels biogas can also be used for various purposes so how we can manage them now the last topic is what are the various ways of management that is management of fossil fuels how they can be managed the first point which is considered for their management is use of natural gas natural gas can be used as a substitute second alternate source of non conventional energy such as solar energy solar and wind energy can be used uh, biomass energy can also be used as a substitute third important point uh, which tells us about the management of these resources is biogas 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 can also be used for various purposes like cooking uh, even for vehicles also it can be used so these are the three important methods of management of these resources especially the non renewable resources of energy those are petroleum and coal thank you children